Alright, so here's one last optimization problem. And what we're going to do is take a string of length uh, 28 inches. And then we're going to cut it into two pieces. And I'm going to use this first piece to make a circle. I'm going to use the second piece to make a square. So this piece is going to become a circle. And the second piece is going to become a square. question is, what's the largest and smallest areas that we can enclose with these two shapes? The circle and the square together. So we cut a string of length 28 into two pieces. form a circle with the first and a square with the second. And find the maximum and minimum areas that we can enclose. by the two shapes together. So the idea is that we want to know the area of this circle. So we need to figure out its radius. And we want to know the area of the square, so we want to find its side length. And this is going to change depending on how much uh, string we give to each part, right? If I use, you know, the whole thing for the square, I'm going to get one huge square. If I use the whole thing for the circle, I'm going to get one huge circle, and somewhere in between, you know, lots of different things can happen. So what I'm going to do is call the length that I use for the circle, x. And then this remaining piece, the piece that I use for the square, is going to be 28 minus x, because there's a total of 28 inches of string. Right? So, this red piece of string that I use for the, uh, the circle, x ends up being the circumference of the circle. That's x. So whatever this radius r is, x is 2 pi r. So r is going to be x over 2 pi. And so the area of the circle, which I'm going to call a sub o, is going to be pi r squared. So that's going to be pi x over 2 pi squared, so that's going to be, let's see, x squared, a pi is going to cancel from the top and bottom, and I'm going to be left with 4 pi in the denominator. So that's the area of the circle, and I'm going to use a similar idea for here, but I want to find the side length x so I can find the, the area of the square, which will be s squared, and the observation is that the total perimeter of this square, which is s plus s plus s plus s, so 4s, that's the same as the length of the string that I used to create that square. So 28 minus x is equal to 4s. Now I can solve this for s by dividing both sides by 4. That means that the area of the square is s squared. That's going to be 28 minus x over 4, the quantity squared.
And you can expand that if you want to. I don't think I want to right now. Yeah, I'm going to leave that as is. So the total area enclosed is the sum of the area enclosed by the circle and the area enclosed by the square. And that's the, that's the, the function I want to optimize. I want to find both the absolute max and absolute min. So the total area enclosed. the area of the circle plus the area of the square. This is a function just of x, the length of the first piece of a string. So x squared over 4 pi plus 28 minus x over 4, the quantity squared. All right, so the question is, um, here's what we want to optimize. We want to find the absolute max and absolute min of this, but on what domain? Again, sort of algebraically, this makes sense for any x. It's a polynomial in x. But we need to find the domain that's appropriate for this problem. So we'll find the real world domain. Well, we need to cut x inches off of a piece of string. And try as I might, I can't cut negative 1 inch off of a, a piece of string to get a string of length negative 1 inches and a string that's length 28 inches. So x needs to be greater than or equal to 0. And likewise, I can't cut a 29-inch piece of string out of a 28-inch piece of st string. So when I try to find the real-world domain, uh, x needs to be greater than or equal to 0. And this other piece of string, 28 minus x, needs to be greater than or equal to 0, which means that x can't be larger than 28. So the domain is from 0 to 28. These are the possible lengths that you can cut out. And now we have a nice continuous function on a nice closed bounded interval. So you can go ahead and take the derivative, find where it's 0 or undefined, and evaluate it at the uh, critical points and endpoints. Right, so a prime of x, I'll try to fit it in here. So this is 1 over 4 pi times the derivative of 2x, so that's the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and then a 2 will cancel. It's like x over 2 pi, plus the derivative of this, which will be 2 times 28 minus x over 4 to the first power, times the derivative of what's inside, which is minus 1 fourth. So let's go ahead and try to combine this into a single fraction. Um, kill off a copy of 2 here. So this is x over 2 pi um, minus 28 minus x over 8. And I want to get common denominators here, so I'm going to multiply and divide this by 4 and multiply and divide this by pi. So this is going to be 4x minus pi times 28 minus x all over 8 pi. All right, so this exists everywhere, that we're not dividing by 0 or anything. So we only care about where this is equal to 0. So we are, when we try to find where a fraction is 0, that's where the numerator is 0. So we're trying to solve 4x um, minus 28 pi plus x, or plus pi x, is equal to 0. So move this over here, and this is 4 plus pi, the quantity times x is equal to 28 pi. So x is going to be 28 pi over... Uh, 4 plus pi. And you can check that this is in the, the domain. If you plug this into a calculator, you'll see that it is somewhere between 0 and uh, 28. So check this. I mean, the sort of idea is that um, 4 plus pi is 
uh, more than 7. So if I replace this denominator with a smaller number, I'm going to get a bigger number. And 28 pi over 7 is 4 times pi, which is, you know, between 4 times 3 and 4 times 4. So it's between 12 and uh, 16, and that is in this range. So this is a critical point, and it is in our domain. Now we just need to evaluate our function at the critical point and the endpoints. And this is, you know, possible to do by hand, but just sort of time consuming. So I'll just go ahead and tell you what these are. Um, at zero, you're only making a square, and you get a square of area 49 um, square inches. If you do this midpoint, you get the smallest answer. Um, it ends up being 196 over 4 plus pi, which is around uh, 27.4 repeating square inches. And then finally, if you use all of the string to make the circle, so x is 28, then you're going to get um, 196 over pi, which is about 62.38 repeating square inches. Well, it's not repeating, is it? It's just too lazy to write more. They can't be repeating because those uh, pi's and the uh, denominators, these are not rational. The main thing is just we know which one of these is the smallest and which one is the largest. So very interestingly, the, the smallest total area you can enclose is when you make a little circle and a little square. And the largest area you can enclose, which is not surprising, is just with the circle. Um, that if you fix the, the perimeter of your object, the shape that has the, the largest area with a fixed perimeter is the circle. Um, you could sort of imagine that if I had this square, I could sort of puff it up. I could, like, you know, stick a little um, valve in here and blow it up using a bicycle pump and push these sides out and enclose more area. So this part's not surprising, but it is quite interesting that the smallest total area that you can enclose uh, happens when you make a little circle and a little square together. And this contains all the information you know to optimize it. That, um, to maximize the area, this is the maximal area, 196 over pi, and you should just build a big circle. And to minimize the area, this is the minimal area, 196 over 4 plus pi, and this is how much string you should use for the um, circle, and then 28 minus that is how much string you're going to use for the square. 